few months ago, I decided to take up digital art so I could make some famous characters like, I don't know, Static, Spider-Man, Goku. But I realized that getting started is pretty confusing. Oh no! I mean, you don't know what you need, why you need it, or even where to begin. So, by the end of this video, I promise that all of your confusion will be dead. I'm gonna share with you the things I did to start my digital art journey to become the next Pablo Picasso, chocolate version of course. And hopefully that helps you out. All right, people, we got a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and get this started. So to me, this step was pretty important. I had to identify what I wanted to do. Did I want to draw characters? Did I want to make environments? Did I want to do 3D, 2D? Did I want to make comic books? All that stuff. By identifying my end goal and what I wanted to do, I felt like I narrowed down my focus because I, I wanted to take up a lot of things. I wanted to do animation. I wanted to do 3D modeling. I wanted to do 2D character design. I wanted to do all of that stuff. But I realized doing that just leads to dabbling and you not specializing in any particular area or mastering anything at all. I don't have to learn all of the stuff. I can focus on one thing or like a few things, master that, get good at that, and then move on to the next thing. I'm currently going through the art school for digital artists curriculum and my online art teacher, Mark Burnett, a former Blizzard entertainment artist. This is something that he actually recommended. I want to become adept at uh, in 2D digital illustration, uh, Photoshop, ZBrush, and animation. Animation is a, a a beast of its own. A lot there, you know. The equivalent of this would be, um, it's like a, maybe like a chef thing that he wants to become a master at desserts and main courses, and almost like just become good at everything. And usually, you know, you'll see chefs like specialize. Either you're gonna have like a bakery, you open a bakery, or you open a restaurant, or you know, focus in type different types of cuisine. So I would focus on the 2D part first, make sure that this gets leveled up as much as you can. And then, you know, when you feel really good about that, then you can start to dabble into animation. But like all of this at the same time, probably wouldn't recommend. So what does this look like in practice? You simply write down a list of stuff you want to do when it comes to digital art. Then you put a star next to your current focus and only focus on that until you're satisfied with your work. Once you're satisfied, move on to the next goal. I found this step to be crucial because a lot of thoughts have been coming to my mind like anxiety, doubt, fear, feelings of not being smart enough for some reason. And by looking at those goals that I've written down, I am able to remind myself of why I started the journey in the first place. And it, it kind of keeps me going, you feel me? So I know everybody hates this answer, but it depends. No, really, it depends. Don't click off the video. It depends on what you want to do, you know? Um, you want to be mobile? You're just going to be sitting inside the house? Because that's what we're all doing right now because of the Modelo virus, right? It's more than no time! Finding a tablet depends on your wants and your budget, of course. I mean, you got like a few choices. There are drawing tablets that have no screen. There are the pen displays and there are the all-in-one tablets like the iPad Pro and Microsoft Surface, stuff like that. Drawing tablets are the cheaper option. All you gotta do is hook it up to a computer, laptop or something, download the necessary drivers and essentially you're good to start drawing. However, using one of these can be kind of tricky because they, they have no screen. I, I have no idea how people are able to do that it usually takes like a few weeks or maybe a couple of days to get used to it just got to build up the hand-eye coordination i guess so all on one tablets like the surface and the ipad pro are pretty good options if you want to go mobile if you want to like go out of town or something you want to go on campus no one's going on campus we're all in zoom university if you want to go somewhere you, you can just take your tablet and just start drawing you know like, like this uh, this has become a pretty uh, popular option like with the new ipad pro coming out and procreate things like that getting a tablet is also a pretty good idea if you don't have a laptop or a pc so there's that just keep that in mind still can't decide my suggestion just you know stack your bread up and get a pen display maybe like a 12 inch or a 16 inch i have a huion canvas pro 16 it's been pretty reliable for me for about six months now it comes in handy if i want to live stream or record some youtube videos and all around it's like a really good tablet you can check out the review i did for the tablet and you can check out how to set up the tablet once you have yours but only after you finish this video we don't need you going anywhere right now
there is literally a ton of drawing software to choose from on the interwebs and no i'm not gonna go over all of them in this video however i can recommend three that seem to be pretty good and are pretty popular right now that's krita clip studio plain what Ugh, clip, st clip studio paint excuse me and photoshop i don't have much experience with krita but it's free so that's always good right and i have a lot of people in the uh, interman discord community that tell me that krita is pretty good it has all the essentials and i've seen some people crank out some pretty good art with it so if you're not for spending money and nobody really is uh, you can just download krita and that should be pretty good clip studio paint is another option very popular choice amongst uh, the art community I have a lot of friends that use clip studio paint they say it's pretty good they got no complaints you do have to pay for clip studio paints there's it's like 49.99 for like pro version and 219 for like i don't know i'm gonna put it up here i forgot the names of the the freaking plans however there is a free trial that you can start in order to test out the program and see if it fits your needs now photoshop is my primary software a lot of people in the industry use this famous artists like ross draws uses photoshop um ethan becker and my art teacher marbernet it's got a lot of cool features like lookify gradient maps layer styles uh, bells and whistles things like that the only downside though is that you have to um you have to get a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, which is, yeah, it's a pretty big downside. However, if you're a student, the subscription fee can be reduced to $29.95, which it's not, it's not that bad. And you can still use it for commercial purposes, which is, which is good. So those are the options I'm presenting. Um, there are plenty of softwares out there. Feel free to go take a look. So there are two paths you can take when starting your art journey. There is the free path and there is the paid path. Both of them have their pros and cons. The pros are the free path. It's, it's free. Duh. And you have a vast amount of resources like YouTube videos, articles, blogs, uh, forums. All thanks to a little thing called the internet. It's pretty new came out like i don't know like last month one con that people argue is that sometimes you don't get quality material when you take the free path however when you consider channels like proco jazza ross draws ethan becker and interman arts of course this con is sort of mitigated you know you can also join discord servers to find other artists to help you along your journey one con that i do find a bit more negative than uh the previous one is that you'll be wondering what you need to learn next you'll be jumping from different instructors different videos that contain different ways of doing things an artist may have a different style of like drawing maybe there is no clear path that's what i'm trying to say and personally i found this path uh, pretty difficult because i didn't know what to do first what to do next what to do next what to do next until i'm the next pablo picasso the chocolate version of course for me um the progression was kind of difficult when i was on the free path that's just me i i'm not you obviously the first pro of the paid path is that you have a curriculum that the instructor has you know laid out for you you know which concepts come next you have perspective anatomy construction color and light all that jazz is laid out for you and you know which steps to take additionally depending on the course that is you may get some professional critique i get my work critiqued every week by uh, mark himself first con of the paid path you have to pay for it yeah. Another con is you may not get what you paid for, of course, but but the instructor typically has like a, I don't know, like a, a refund policy or something. So th that con isn't that much of a big deal. You just have to do your research, you know. I did my research on art school for digital artists and I deemed it a pretty good course. So at this point, you've got the mindset, you got the tablet, and you got the drawing software. So what's next? Just
This is something I try to do just about every day. Um, it's engaging in deliberate practice. You have to know what you're gonna practice and when you're gonna practice it. What I typically do first is I write down what my art session consists of. It usually looks something like this. Keep in mind that you have to work around your schedule. So really sit down and think of a game plan to get some serious practice in. And I know I'm gonna sound a little hypocritical when I say this, cause I, I still struggle with it, but mitigate distractions like your phone youtube videos video games all that stuff you know you know focus really focus put on some lo-fi hip-hop and focus you'll also want to self-critique your work and have others critique it as well and if you don't have access to art school there are tons of discord servers filled with um people that are on the same journey as you that are willing to help you improve there are servers like character drawing the hardest um draw box the learning curve the animator guild by uh howard Wimsford first and the Interman arts discord of course um you know shameless plug link in the description and you don't have to be afraid of constructive criticism this is something that i um it's just something i have to get used to in order to actually see some improvement in my art and when it comes to practice and improving it just takes a little patience if i can do it then that means you can do it too anyways if you found that helpful found it entertaining maybe feel free to leave a like a comment consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss a single Interman classic check out the description for all those those fun links I mentioned earlier. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Interman from Interman Arts signing off.